So if you find yourself watching this video, you need a little function review, specifically on transformations of functions. So I suggest you get out some pen, paper, uh, preferably your notebook for next year, and start taking some good notes, and uh, hopefully you'll be in, in quite a bit of luck. So there's lots of graphs we have to be familiar with, and we like to title these parent functions. So if I were you, I would get these sketched in my notebook. Um, these are going to be functions that we're going to sketch every single week, and we do have to know what each parent function looks like and how to translate them. So the first one's called a quadratic. You'll notice that's our, our x squared term, y equals x squared. Um, this is a positive x squared, and its main point that we're going to be concerned about is sitting right at the origin, and I will label that point 0, 0. Okay, if it said negative x squared, of course, that would flip my graph upside down, still focusing on that point 0, 0. The next one is a cubic, y equals x cubed. Um, things to note about that, its main point that we're going to focus on, of course, is 0, 0. You'll notice that it is concave down on the left, concave up on the right. It's important we draw it that way every time. Our square root function, uh, y equals the square root of x. When in doubt, worst thing you could do is plug some, or I'm sorry, the nicest thing you could do is plug some points in if you're stuck. Um, clearly, you cannot plug in a negative number, so that's why you'll notice the graph does not extend to the x values that are negative. We do not deal with imaginary numbers. Uh, the first nice number is 0, square root of 0 is 0. Probably the next nice number is 4, square root of 4 is 2. And you get the idea of what the graph looks like. Again, its main focus point is 0, 0. Cubed root of x. Again, worst case scenario, plug some points in to figure out what the shape looks like. You can take the cube root of a negative, so you will see the graph on both sides. As we continue down, um, probably the, the three heavy hitters are our exponential log and reciprocal graphs. Exponential is y equals e to the x or 2 to the x, a variable as your exponent. Okay, This graph is extremely special. You'll notice that it does not go through 0, 0 like our previous functions. Its special point is 0, 1, and that's the point that we're going to shift all over. The other thing that's special about exponential is that it should have a horizontal asymptote drawn in every time we draw it. And we'll label that asymptote y equals 0. Okay, so every time you sketch exponential, we should have an asymptote. Uh, our log graph, y equals log base a of x, or y equals the natural log of x. Okay, either of those are going to look very similar here. Um, this note time, you'll notice that it passes through the point 1, 0. Okay, um, you'll notice that we cannot take the log of a negative number, so there should be no negative values here. And it too has an asymptote, this time this guy has a vertical asymptote, and that should be drawn in every time. And the equation of this is x equals 0. Now one thing that you should be aware of, of course, is that your exponential and your log are inverses of each other. That means you can take every point on your exponential, switch the x and y, and it will turn out to be a log graph. For example, 0, 1. If you switch the x and y, you get 1, 0. That will work for every point. Our reciprocal graph is 1 over x. Okay, this has several vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Well, I guess not several. It has one of each. Uh, you'll remember from your pre-calc days, the vertical asymptote is what you get when you set the denominator equal to 0. So when x equals 0, I should have a vertical asymptote, and we can easily draw that in. If I want a horizontal asymptote, again from your pre-calc days, this is when you do a power fight. Okay, so I don't have an x term on top, but I do have one on the bottom, so I would say that's small over large, which of course is y equals 0. And I should have an asymptote there. Then you'll see that function that squeezes in here and here. Now, you'll notice that 1 over x um, is positive. If I said negative 1 over x, then my graph would look very similar, however it would be in the opposite quadrants, and it would still have asymptotes. Uh, three left to go here, again for parent functions. Just a constant function is a nice horizontal line here, and I would say that it has a slope of 0, something to think about there since calculus is all about slope. A linear function, of course, is in the form of y equals mx plus b. In this case, I don't have a b, it is 0. Um, but I have a nice linear function, and notice that it remains linear throughout the whole time. Okay, it has a constant slope. And lastly, my absolute value. That is a big heavy hitter we'll deal with quite a bit. Um, and its special point there is 0, 0, and that's why I will be translating everybody about. Um, notice... It's a positive absolute value of x. If I had said y equals the negative absolute value of x, okay, that wouldn't take my absolute value and flip it upside down. 
So again, this is a quick overview of our parent functions. Now we'll focus on translating these functions. Now, for every function, you should be able to translate it, shift it, up, down, left, or right, of course, without a calculator. So let's just talk about the difference between f of x equals x squared plus 6 and f of x equals the quantity x plus 6 squared. These do very different things. Now, however, you'll notice that the parent function is x squared. Okay, so my parent function is x squared. I can see that here. I can see that here. I'm squared. So again, I'm keeping in mind, oops, that this shape looks like this, and it's just going to get shifted someplace. So, again, hopefully this is just a quick review for you. Any term that is added outside of parentheses or a radical or a quantity is a vertical shift. And anything that's added inside or subtracted inside of, again, parentheses or a radical is your horizontal shift. Now, the horizontal shift is the one that we're going to do the opposite on. So let's go back to our first function here, f of x equals x squared plus 6. And let's talk about what this graph is going to look like. Okay, so my parent function stems at 0, 0. And I'm going to shift this graph vertically, because it's not inside anything, up 6. Okay, so I'm going to go up a positive 6, and I'm going to draw the same function. So just a parabola facing upward, shifted up 6. Now likewise, we'll apply the same property on the left-hand side. Notice that my 6 is sitting inside, parentheses, so this is a horizontal shift. Because I see a positive 6, I'm actually shifting it to the left 6. So I'm going to go left 6, and again, just draw the nice parent function parabola. So I'll run through a couple more examples. This works with any of our parent functions that we just talked about. Anything outside is our vertical shift, inside is our horizontal. All right, so we're going to run through a couple quick examples here, and hopefully you're feeling pretty good about these. So I've given you the function f of x equals x cubed plus 2. So again, just take note where that 2 is sitting. Is it inside something or outside? Clearly it's outside, it's not wrapped in parentheses, so we'll just make a note that this is a vertical shift up 2. So as I go to graph this, all right, I gotta think about what my, my major focus point is. What does x cubed look like? And again, hopefully you have this memorized. If not, take a quick look at those parent functions, and our goal there is to get them memorized. x cubed, if I quickly sketch it out, looks something like this. And again, the main point to focus on was 0, 0, and I'm just gonna take that point and shift it up 2. And I'll make myself a new point there. And again, just recall that you're concave down on the left and concave up on the right. Okay, and when I say concavity, um, you did talk about this in pre-calc. Concave down looks like a frown. Concave up looks like a cup. Let's try another one here. Um, f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 6 plus 3. All right, so let's talk through the shifts. This 3 is outside, so that is a vertical shift of 3. This 6 is inside, so this is a horizontal shift. And remember, it does the opposite, so I'm actually going right 6. All right, so I just said we have to go right 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up 3, 1, 2, 3. And just take note, absolute value again makes a V, sorry, value, um, and it is centered at the origin. So again, I moved it right 6 and up 3. I'm going to make my new point. And again, I'm just going to make a nice V. And there you go, we have our shift. Let's try a few more. f of x equals, uh, let's say, the square root of x minus 2. All right, what does a radical graph look like? All right, we'll just think about it. What numbers can and can't you take the square root of? Well, we can't take the square root of negatives. We don't deal with imaginary numbers again, so there's nobody on this side of the graph. The first square root I know is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Square root of 4 is 2. So I know my graph is going to gradually increase like that. So its main focus point is 0, 0. And this 2 that's inside the radical, so again, I'm saying inside or underneath, tells me this is a horizontal shift, and I'm actually going to go right 2. So I'm going to move my graph right to, and again, this is just a nice growing function. All right, let's get a few more going in here. Uh, let's say f of x equals... 
Oh, goodness. How about negative absolute value of x minus 2? Okay. So again, take note, the 2 is sitting inside, so hopefully you're saying that that is a horizontal shift, and I'm actually going to go right to. Uh, the only thing that's different in this case is this negative out front. Okay. So think about this. If you see a negative, you are doing a reflection. Now the question is, am I reflecting over the x or am I reflecting over the y? So we've talked about reflections, and I think it should be obvious. Notice I'm not making the x value negative. There's not a negative in front of this x. I can actually divide this negative over and say that this is really negative f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 2. So take note that I am making the y value negative, which implies, notice I'll use the symbol a lot, that means implies, that this is a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, when I make the y negative, I'm reflecting over the x-axis, and I believe we've talked about that previously. For example, if I give you this shape and I tell you that point is 2, 4, and I reflect it over the x, I would now get to negative 4. So notice I made the y value negative. When I reflect over the x, I make the y value negative. So as I go to graph this, I do know I need to, that it makes a v for absolute value. I need to move this v right to. Okay, there is no vertical shift, so this is my main point. And all it's telling me is to take my normal v, and because I made that y negative, I'm going to reflect it over the x-axis. So now my v would be upside down. Uh, I've got two goofy ones for you left, probably the two most important. Uh, let's say y equals e to the x plus 3 minus 4. Okay, now, you might be thinking, well, there's nobody wrapped in parentheses. Well, certainly, um, we should know, just again from our basic algebra, that our exponent is truly in parentheses. Whoops. Uh, so, I can say to myself that this is my vertical shift, is down 4. And because I have a plus 3 up here, my horizontal shift is actually to the right 3. Now, take your time with this one. This one's going to make you think a bit. What does the exponential function typically look like? Okay, what point does it cross through? All right, we're not just shifting from the origin this time. We're shifting from the point 0, 1. All right, so I need to take that point 0, 1, and I'm actually going to plot it because that's where exponential comes from. And I need to do a vertical shift of down 4. So think about where that's going to put you. So I'm at 0, 1, and I need to go down 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. That should actually put you at negative 3. Then I need to move this to the right 3, 1, 2, 3, and plot that point. Okay, so this is where my shift has taken me, or my translation. I needed to go down 4, right 3, and that's all from the point 0, 1. Now, I can simply draw in my exponential. Remember, exponential grows very, very fast. And the only other thing I need to consider is that exponentials have an asymptote. And remember, that asymptote falls right underneath it, one space underneath it. So I'm going to make a note on my graph that the asymptote is at y equals negative 4. Okay, if this point is at 3, negative 3, the asymptote falls one below at y equals negative 4. And again, exponential grows very, very fast. All right, y equals e to the negative x plus 2. All right, so I'm saying in my head my vertical shift is outside. I'm going up 2. My horizontal shift doesn't look like I have one, but I do have a reflection. Who became negative? Well, I made the x value negative. And if the x is negative, that implies that's a reflection over the you've guessed it, hopefully, y-axis. Okay, if I make the x value negative, I'm reflecting over the y. So again, exponential has that special point. It crosses through 0, 1. That's what I'm concerned about. So I'm going to plot that point 0, 1. I'm going to say I need to do a vertical shift of 2. So 1, 2. I should now be at a height of 3. I don't have a horizontal shift, and I'm going to lightly draw this in. All right, my graph should look, and again, I'm trying to, whoops. I lied, it should not look like that. It should look like this. Okay. Now, clearly that's not my final graph because I have to do a reflection over the y-axis. But if it helps, feel free to draw that one in. And if I reflect it over the y-axis, I think you would say that it now is going to go in a decreasing fashion. 
Okay, and where should my asymptote fall? Well, if I am sitting at that point zero three, my asymptote should be at y equals two. All right, last one. I promise of this type, and we'll move on. Y equals the ln of x minus three plus one. All right, so why don't you pause it, state your vertical and horizontal shifts. So hopefully you set a vertical of 1, a horizontal of right 3. And again, the log graphs are pretty special. They don't do go through that origin point. The log is a very, very slow-growing function. It takes a while to get going. And its mega point is that point zero, 1, 0. So I'm shifting everything about the point 1, 0. So I'm actually going to plot that point and say everybody's based off of that point. So I need to go vertical shift of 1. I'm going to move that point up 1. And then I'm going to move it right 3. 1, 2, 3. Okay, so my new point is 4, 1. And recall that the asymptote is always going to be 1 behind the point. So I'm going to draw in my vertical asymptote this time. And it's just going to grow super, super slow. It's not going to shoot up very fast. Nice and slow. And of course, the equation of this asymptote is x equals 3. Nice vertical line, x equals. All right, so this time they've given us a function, um, and they've named it g of x here. And they've plotted some points for you to see. And basically, they want you to apply three properties. They want to know, what does this graph look like uh, if you find g of x plus 2, g of negative x, and g of x plus 3 minus 1? So I think it's extremely simple. Just ask yourself, what type of shift are they asking for? Where is your 2 sitting? So I would say this is a horizontal shift, and I'm going to go left 2. And basically, all that means is you're going to take this whole graph and you're going to shift her left two. Um, so let me try to redraw my graph here. All right, so think about the point zero, zero. If you shift her left two, where are you going to be? Hopefully at negative two, zero. If you took the point, I don't have to scroll back, uh, it was at one, three, and you shifted her left two, where are you now going to be? Hopefully at negative 1, 3, etc. And all you're going to redo is sketch that graph out and label those points. Same idea here, g of negative x. Okay, so if I made the x negative, I should know that's a reflection over the y-axis. Remember, you do the opposite. So basically, they want you to take that graph and reflect it over the y-axis. Okay, so I'm not going to do it for you, but you get the idea, reflect it over the y. And lastly, they want you to take that whole picture in this case, they want you to shift it left 3, and then move it down 1. And I think you can take each of those points and do that, and then connect them. Well, hopefully that does it for a quick review. Again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Feel free to call, stop by, do what you need to do. And I look forward to seeing your, your answers.